Hey, this is Ed from Foundry, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate our new GLTF options in Moto 11.2 version 3. I'm also going to show you how to export a GLB file that can be uploaded to Facebook, as well as other sites that support the GLTF format. GLTF stands for Graphics Library Transmission Format, but what does that mean exactly, and why is it important for artists and designers who use Moto? Many people think of GLTF as the JPEG of 3D. GLTF is a file format for viewing 3D scenes and models on the web. The really exciting news is that Facebook now supports GLTF, so if you want your 3D work to be seen by potentially a billion people, then uploading your work to Facebook is your best option. So let's prepare an existing model for upload to Facebook. I have this model of a steering wheel that was made with Moto by Andy Brown. But this model is currently in Catmull Clark subdivision mode, so we'll need to freeze the mesh so that we have standard polygon faces. We'll also need to take into consideration the maximum file size limit that Facebook has implemented, which is 3 megabytes. So as I've mentioned, this is a Catmull Clark subdivision mesh. Uh, you can tell because in the bottom right hand corner of our 3D viewport, it says polygons, Catmull Clark. Now, GLTF does support uh, normal maps, so I could potentially duplicate this mesh press shift tab to get out of Catmull Clark subdivision mode so we're looking at the standard faces and you'll notice that this uh, model in polygons mode or faces mode uh, has a pretty lightweight mesh. We could use this as the target and the uh, Catmull Clark subdivided mesh as the source and bake a nice normal map. Uh, but for the purpose of this video I think we're just going to keep it simple and we will freeze uh, this steering wheel asset uh, so we just have standard polygon faces. Now with the mesh item selected, if I come over to the properties tab and then the surface side tab, you'll notice that in Catmull Clark mode our subdivision level is 4. So if I were to freeze this mesh uh, at the moment with a subdivision level of 4, we'll get a very dense mesh. So what I'm going to do is reduce the subdivision level to 1 and then we'll freeze this mesh uh, so that it won't be quite as dense. So I'll come over to Geometry, Freeze, and I want to make sure my Freeze Curves As is set to Faces, and I'll click OK. So now you can see that the mesh has become a little bit more dense, but it's nowhere near what it would be if our subdivision level remained at 4. So this should keep us beneath the 3 megabyte limit uh, for Facebook upload. So now I'm just going to start uh, creating material groups uh, for each of the different parts of the steering wheel. So I'll double click on this section of the mesh and I'll press M for material and I'm just going to name this centerpiece. And I could give it a color but it won't make a difference uh, until I change it in the shader tree uh, because I have the type of material set to GLTF. So I'll press OK and now in the shader tree if I expand my material group we have this GLTF material. Now if I go to change the base color multiplier of this material, let me just choose a kind of darkish blue, whoops, that looks about right. You'll notice that nothing uh, has changed in the 3D viewport. So what we have to do is, uh, we have two options, I can either press F8 to fire off a preview render, and that will allow us to see our uh, GLTF material. Alternatively, if I change the 3D viewport from default to advanced, uh, that gives us a nice preview of our uh, material. So we also have other options uh, for the GLTF material in the Properties tab. Uh, we have a Metallic Multiplier, Roughness Multiplier, Normal Scale, Ambient Occlusion Scale, Emissive Color, Emissive Level, and Reflection Rays. Uh, so for now, just to keep things simple, I'm only going to change the Metallic Multiplier. Uh, I don't want this to be metallic at all, so I'll just change that from 100% to 0%. Uh, so we're completely dielectric, and then the roughness, uh, we'll just put that down to 20%. So you can see it's no longer as rough, we're getting that nice highlight across the top of the uh, centerpiece there. And this is as simple as just selecting your different parts uh, of the steering wheel and pressing uh, M to assign a material. So I'll just call this part uh, the grip, and you'll see if I change the color here, let's just choose a lighter blue, it won't have an effect yet. Click OK, uh, because we have to come over to the shader tree and make the changes here. So I'll just change this to uh, kind of a lighter blue. Maybe I'll change the saturation just to lighten it a little bit. Back to the value, just to darken it up a little bit. 
There we go. And similarly, I could do the same for this, uh, this piece here, M for material. I'll just call this uh, T outer, just because this part reminds me of the letter T. Change the color really quickly. So I'll just make this kind of a grayish color, like so. Change the metallic multiplier. I probably don't want this to be uh, very metallic, so I'll put that down to zero. Uh, the roughness, that could be, well, let's go with 85%. Now these pieces here, these two bars, I might want to make those uh, metallic. So I'll assign a material, I'll call these bars, and the color doesn't matter because uh, I'm going to just leave the metallic multiplier at 100 and the roughness at uh, 0. So now if I press F8 to fire off a preview render, you can see that it's showing up as completely metallic. So that's looking pretty nice. Now I have one more piece here, this inner part, which I'll just press M to create a material, and I'll call this T underscore inner. And again, this is another GLTF material. This time I'll just uh, create kind of a lighter gray material, maybe a little bit blue, like so. Uh, maybe we'll go a little bit lighter, actually. And the metallic multiplier for this will be uh, zero. And we'll give it a roughness of 50%. Okay, so in the shader tree, I also have the option to add an image map. Uh, in GLTF, you have a few image maps to work with, so I can come over to Add Layer, Image Map, a New Image, and you have to use either a PNG or JPEG. Uh, it's what uh, GLTF prefers at the moment. So I'll just call this Test and click Save. And I'm just going to do a 1K map. RGBA is fine. And in the effects column, if I right click on the diffuse color, you can see that we have a new GLTF section. And here is where you have ambient occlusion, base color, emission, metallic, normal, and roughness. Uh, everything else, if you're converting a, an existing asset to a GLTF asset, uh, and your asset has like a bump map or a group masking, uh, these should be removed. Also, if you have multiple diffuse color maps, they should all be baked down into uh, one base color image map per GLTF material. And then a few things that I've already mentioned. Uh, you'll want to use PNG or JPEG. You'll want to remove uh, any subdivision geometry. It has to be uh, straight face polygons. And uh, if you have any replicators in your mesh, you'll want to uh, freeze or bake those. Okay, so let's say that we are happy with this. Uh, we'll need to do one more thing before we can actually export the, uh, the file for upload to Facebook. I have to come over to my items list and we actually need to split the model uh, into uh, different mesh items for each of the material groups. Now this is something that uh, might not always be the case, but for now this is what we need to do. So the easiest way to do this is just to right click on our uh, existing mesh item and choose unmerge mesh. That splits all of these different uh, non-contiguous uh, mesh islands into separate uh, mesh items. So I'm also going to select these two pieces right here, the two sidebars, and I could recombine them. So I'll right click in the item list and choose merge meshes and I'll leave transform compensation on. And now each of these different parts uh, is their own mesh item and they correspond to the material groups. I can also right click and delete my uh, test image map because we don't need that. So now we're ready to export this as uh, actually a GLB file. So I'll come over to File, Export As, and if I come over to Save Type As, you'll notice we have two GLTF options. .gltf and .glb. For uploading to Facebook, we want to use .glb. So I'll just select .glb and click Save. So now if I come over to Facebook, uh, you can see here's my page, my personal page, and uh, I've already been experimenting with some uh, 3D files, just having a lot of fun. It's really a cool way to display your work. Uh, all I have to do is open up my file explorer. Here is my wheelbase.glb. As long as it's under three megabytes, I can just drag it into a new post area, and it should upload just fine. 
So if I left mouse button click and drag, we can kind of uh, rotate and tilt the model. Uh, holding shift and right clicking within the post area allows you to pan, and then holding shift and middle mouse button scrolling allows you to zoom in so you can kind of inspect uh, the various parts of your uh, model. So that's pretty cool. Also, you have these uh, little colors down here. You can change uh, the color to a kind of uh, simple gradient, which looks pretty nice. Uh, you have different gradients. You have a pretty cool desert uh, background. And I'm sure there will be more coming uh, soon. So I'll just I'll stick with this kind of sunburst yellow. So I hope that shed some light on the GLTF export options that were implemented into Moto 11.2 version 3. Uh, thanks for watching.